Game Time! Welcome guys to Game Time where we bring the game right to you. This first game is called Spot the Difference. Tamer, tell them what we're doing. All right, what we're gonna have is two pictures pop up right behind us. You have to name five items that are different from each picture. Awesome, and you're gonna have 30 seconds to find all five differences. So I'm gonna pull out my trusty phone and let's get going, okay? Three, two, one. Go! Oh, wow! Oh, exactly the same. How are we gonna do this? Okay, okay wait. No, I see it. I see it. Yep. Yep. I'm not gonna say no, it. Tell me. Tell you. you guys, when you see it, call it out to your family. So here we go. Okay. Wow. Awesome. All right. We're. Yeah. No. 15 seconds left. 15 seconds. 15. Left. 15. Okay. Yep. No, this is hard. I, see I don't know how to. I see three. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling yeah, you. Yeah, don't 10 tell me. Seconds left. I'm utterly lost. I don't uh, know where to even go from now. Yeah, this you're is, lost. Okay. Here we go. Three. Two, Lord, one! Wow. Time stop oh, guessing! Time guessing! Okay, okay, let's pull up the screen to see what was different. Boom! Awesome. Boom! There you have it. Man, I that was like a magic that. trick. I just yeah. kind of shot it out there. That was awesome. Alright, let's go to the next picture. We just rearranged some more things on a different screen. Let's pull it up. You know the rules. And three, two, one, boom! There it is! Whoa! Whoa! Okay, Whoa. same thing. Okay, wow, well, no, nope, I see it on that side on the picture, but I'm not telling you. Okay, Do you yeah. guys see it? Call it out! Right, Don't forget to call it out! In, 10 seconds in. Woo! Uh, 10 seconds in. Okay, not left. I'm, That's good. I'm uh, still confused. No, no yeah. I see a difference. I see it! Wow! I can't believe wow. it. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds I'm left. I'm seeing things like a machine gun. I just, I got it. I got okay, it. Okay, three. Wow. Two. Whoa! I didn't get five. I don't know about you guys. All right, let's see what's different on that screen in three, two, one, boom! There it is! Oh my gosh. Oh, yep. the cookie the whole time. Got the I lemon, didn't... got the cup, the yeah, other I stuff. There I it is. Cookies. Yeah, cookies I did, are great. Okay. All right, okay. let's go to the next slide. Awesome. We're gonna see what's different in a whole different picture. In three, two, one, boom! boom. Here we go! Okay, here we go! Start Whoa. time! Start time! Whoa. Okay! Whoa! Whoa! Right. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Okay, no! I, yeah, no, I'm yeah, this is really it. hard. Okay. This is harder than all the rest of the pictures. I don't uh, even know. No, I see a difference! I see what? You saw what? I didn't even see it! I'm not gonna tell you. 15 seconds left! Okay, wow. 15 seconds left! Yeah, no. Oh, I just got three in one time. That's oh, amazing. Sure. Really? Hey, hey, hey. Really? Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I just five got seconds left. Wow. Three. No, I don't have the two, rest of the two. One. No. Time. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Let's you pull up the know the screen. drill. Let's, Let's pull up the got. screen. Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, my gosh. Dude, like a magic. Me? Just I threw it out there again. Wow. Okay. Wow, look at I those M&Ms. Man, That's I'm wild. not good at this game. All, All right. right, let's get to the next picture. All right, next round, next round. You guys ready? Okay, get your eyes balls ready. Here we go. Three. Two, one, go! 30 seconds, 30 oh. seconds, go! Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, these this pictures the get one. harder and harder. I don't even know how you do it. Hopefully you guys could do it. You're, you're extremely smart. That's awesome. Okay, All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, you got uh, nope, 12 seconds nope. in. I, I've got zero. We have to work 12 seconds I already in. Have, I, got zero. I have more than five. I have what? more than five. What? More than <laughs> five? I'm just <laughs> kidding. Ten seconds left. What? Ten seconds Whoa. left. Okay. Right. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, I got one. There what? it is. Really? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. No, Three. I got one. Two. No, I can't get one. one. Time. Uh, there we go. That All right. Let's All right. see what's different. Boom. There it is. Okay. Yep. No red and blue okay, and then green and then. Not green, whatever it is. All right, guys, that closes up for game time for Spot the Difference. We'll see you guys next week, and we'll see you then. See you later. <laughs> game time game all time. the time. Game time. Oh, yeah. Game now time. do the game. game. Now game do the game. As we shout out the name of Jesus There are people searching for so much more Shine your light, show them what's worth living for Let it shine in the morning when you rise Let it shine when you're found in the darkest night There is hope in Jesus, life anew Let his love shine through
sing it out, sing it louder. Shine your light, shine your light, shine it brighter. Dance around, dance around, dance around. Shout it out, shout it out, shout it out. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it louder. Shine your light, shine your light, shine it brighter. Dance around, dance around, dance around. Shout it out, shout it out, shout it out. We wanna lift you up, we wanna praise your name, we wanna shout it out. Forever we will sing, don't raise it love. We wanna lift you up, up, up. We wanna lift you up. We wanna lift you up, we wanna praise your name, we wanna shout it out. Forever we will sing, don't raise it love. We wanna lift you up, up, up. We wanna lift you up, up, up. We wanna lift you up. Shine your light, shine your light, you wanna lift you up. Dance around, dance around, dance around. Shout it out, shout it out, shout it out. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Ephesians 2. monsters. They're kind of quiet, aren't they? 
Yes. Now, does anybody know his name? No. What's your name? My name is Nash. Matt. Nash. That's right, Nash. I was going to say Nash. I'm so sorry. Either one. Mash, Nash. Yeah. We're close, right? Yes. So, look at here. I think you did a really good job, and I'm kind of glad you didn't make it to the monster convention. No. Oh. Because we like having you here. Because are we monsters for Jesus? Yeah. I don't think they are. Are you? Yeah. Woo! That's right. It's all about Jesus. Well, as long as you have all you can eat trash, I'll be good. Well, uh, do you eat candy? Oh, yeah, that'll do too. Uh oh. Well, guys, we just can't avoid it, can we? All right, are you going to come back sometime and do more jokes? Yeah, next time I'm lost, I'll be sure to come. <laughs> okay, the next time you're lost, you just come on in. Yeah, right here. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Tell me bye. Yeah. Well, you know I'm happy to be here. I'm always happy to be here. So, you know what? Yeti wasn't here. And when Yeti's not here, Polly's usually not here. Oh, my gosh. Let's see if Polly's here. One, two, three. We've got to call. One, two, three. Ah! Please, 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 Polly. I'm not here. Oh! I think he says he's not, but... Guess what? I have some exciting news to tell you. What? Okay, here's the deal right here. I know your friend, Mr. Jesse. Oh, yeah? I bet you didn't know that I knew him, did you? What? Well, I do. I know Mr. Jesse. Oh. And guess what? What? You know he's got two little girls. Yes! Stinky! Ellie J. Ellie J. And oh. Bowie. But God. guess what? What? He's going to have a little boy. Oh, really? How about that one? Yeah. Won't that be like the greatest thing ever? Yes. So it won't be long when you're going to have Ellie J and Chloe in here and little baby boy will be in here later. Oh. Yeah. So, hey guys, if y'all happen to see Mr. Jesse tonight, tell him congratulations. I was just so excited about that. So what do you think about it, Polly? I think it's about time you had a boy. Yelly yeah. Jay, are you excited to have a little brother? Yeah, because then it's going to be a big deal. Oh, that's a, a good name. Ezekiel. That's Woo. a good name. Okay, so Ellie Jay, you're just super happy, aren't you? You're going to be a good big sister, aren't you? And just here's be the careful. Thing. Little boys are stinky. Yeah. Are little boys stinky? Yeah. All the time. They're saying no. Oh. But here's the thing, I bet I know a good babysitter for you. Her name starts with K and ends with L. Kim Doll. <laughs> okay, so, all right, we got to do our rules. Yes, yes, because Mr. John up there doesn't know them. Mr. John doesn't know the rules. And you well, need to know the thing. we got to do the rules because we have to play by the rules, correct? Yes. All right, now, Mr. Ron was here last week. And Who? Mr. Ron Carmichael, he was here. He kind of played with, played, boo, 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 boo. he kind of followed the rules, didn't he? No. Oh, what? I say no. How dare he? That's it. How dare he? How very dare he? Okay, the first rule is going to come from Ben because you should have seen him dancing to that rap song. Ooh. He's got some good moves back there. I think you need to be on stage next week. All right, Ben, give us a rule. Keep all four legs on the chair. chair. Which means keep you all four, legs, four legs. legs. All four. Oh. You, yeah, all of them. Oh, okay, the four, let's four. see here. Let's go with a promise. Okay, I'm working. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Molly? <laughs> I got it right. I got it right. Let's mark this date down in history. All right, Molly, what you got? Exactly. Yes. And keep your hands to yourself. I don't have Sean. hands. That's right. Hey, let's see. So that's an easy one. Okay. I can do that. I'm going to do it real fast. Charlotte, what you got? Oh, do not bite. Hey, Bobby, do you hear that one? No biting. Don't. I won't bite unless you try and take my candy. Or my chocolate covered cockroaches. 
Who my favorite? Okay, Palmer, you got one? What you got? Keep your feet to yourself. Keep. In other words, don't be touching anybody with those feet like feet. Yeah. With those feet like kicking someone. Feet. All right, just a minute. I'm trying to call on people we don't usually call on a lot. Izzy, what have you got? Don't what? give Polly your care. How can you do this to me? Okay. That's not a good Mr. John, you can give me your candy. Mr. John, are you going to give him your candy? We can't hear. I think he said a big no. What? I thought we were friends. I think it was a no. All right, now Beckett has got one. What you got, man? Glue your, glue your bottom to the chair. These are new rules. These are new rules. These are rules I've never heard of. All right, Colton Simons, what you got? That's it. Do not talk while a teacher says. This is the most important one. It is. And the, you can never violate it. It, it. it is. I mean, but just because if you do it, Miss Kathy may ruin well, you. Because you here's the thing. Yes, because she's going to tell you. I am. Because you have to listen. Yeah. Yes. But exactly. Miss Kathy, why don't you keep telling me? Here's the like the real deal. Mr. Ron did the same thing last week. Did and what? He did. 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 He or did he take yours? He took yours. What you got? <sighs> what? Grow up in junior. <laughs> Please. Now let me tell you, if anybody's got to throw up, we know that Mr. Peter will be coming later. Who who got to hear Mr. Peter the other week? <laughs> he taught the lesson. Okay, so guess what? He's going to be coming. He's going to be the one doing wax zone. So I'm here for a while, but he's going to be doing it. So when, the, when he comes, why don't y'all tell him about throwing up in June? Really? I think that's a good rule to share with him. Yes. Don't you think? Yes. Okay, because Reagan, your arm is about to fall off. What you got? <sighs> what? Don't pick boogers. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, don't pick it. Don't pick your, pick your friends boogers either. Oh gosh, goodness gracious, you guys. The, those are the two rules that are never forgotten. Yeah. But now Isabella must have something good going on because she's got a two hander up going. Have fun! Ladies and gentlemen, have fun! That's it, that's it, that's it. We always have fun. Now I think that may be all. Is that all? Probably. We made up about 10 today. Yeah, I was going to say, we have lots and lots of them. But let's do. Our Polly the Pirate song. Yes. What do y'all think? think so. All right, so everybody on your feet. I want to hear you extra loud. Yes. I want Miss Mandy to be able to hear us. So everybody on your feet. Yep. All right, everything should be under your seats, too. Under your seats. All right, here we go. Whenever Mr. John is ready. Long ago, the ocean door. They opened the lid and what did they see? Who was the prices for you and for me? Silas. <laughs> I do think 
that everybody's been in here before. So look at here. We got a bunch of old timers in here. Oh, so no visitors today. But you know, Ella is here. It's been a long time since Ella's been in here. So we're happy to have her. Okay. Let's see here. So now is it time for what's up? What's up? You know, because I get confused. Okay, let's do what's up with Mr. J. What's up, West Acres kids? How you doing? Got something good for you. Talking about the story of Jesus weeping this week. So Jesus wept. Well, he wept over Lazarus' death, a dear friend to him. Right? And he was broken over Lazarus' death. Well, what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn what our what's up is, and it is this. Gotcha. Because we are made in God's image, I will have empathy for people. Now, empathy is a big word. Right? So what does that mean? Well, it means you'll have care for people, but honestly feel with them. The scriptures tell us to mourn with those who mourn and to rejoice with those who rejoice. That's the words of Paul. But we see in Luke, Jesus weeping over the death of his friend because he was broken over the, the, the pain of losing someone he loved and cared about. And so what we learn from this is we should be broken with those who are broken to encourage them and to tell them of true hope in Christ and, and to rejoice with them when they rejoice because in that we are following in the ways of Christ. Right, A broken heart for someone who's walking through something that is difficult shows a love for that person. And that's where it all stems from. So when somebody says, what's up? Tell them, because we are made in God's image, I will have empathy for people. Be like Jesus. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Because that is how we show his love to this world. I'll see you next week. Hey guys, it's me, Greg. <laughs> Okay, I can't do the voice the whole time, but welcome back to Screen Hunters. Dan and I have been pretty bored here in the studio, which, well, it led to a little bit of a discovery. That's right, we can play video games on the green screen. Sort of. I'll show you how it works. We've hooked up Mario Party to the green screen so you can see all the gameplay on the screen behind me. I will of course be playing as a Mario and cameraman Dan will be playing as Luigi. We're playing to see who the ultimate Mario Party winner is. I have my controller right here and let's get this thing kicked off. Cameraman Dan is Luigi and we're jumping here. Look at all these mini games we got. All right, here we go. Smashing Crab, me versus Dan. So Dan's driving the crab right now. And they're trying to throw the smash on me, but I'm feeling quick today. Whoa! That was a close call. We got 10 seconds coming down, Dan. Stay alive, buddy! Stay alive! Move like a crab! Shift like a crab! One! Whoa! First game, Greg! Mario wins! So next up, we're in the kitchen, everybody. We're playing a little game called Sizzlin' Steaks. We're gonna see who can cook their meat the fastest here. Oh, I lost my first meat! Gotta be easy with the pan. Really flipping and marinating there. Dan's got one side left, come on! Come on, Mario! His plate is full! I'm still competing. <laughs> I'm losing my steak here, team. That's why I microwave all my food. Strictly cereal and DiGiorno pizza. All right, so Dan won that one. Luigi wins. Turns out Sizzlin' Steaks wasn't my game. Now I love this game, I played Little League 10 years. So Dan, I'm gonna give you a run for your money, buddy. Oh, I'm in the zone, Dan. Heater. All right, you gotta be quick, Dan. Gotta be quick, buddy. Oh, you gotta be quick. Oh no, let's go. Mario with another win. I told you not to challenge me in baseball. Maybe cooking, Dan, not baseball. It's a little game called Slapparazzi. Now you're getting everyone out of the way so you can take the perfect selfie. Oh, I'm getting beat up over here. Get out of the way. Yes, Mario! Plus three, looking beautiful. Not today, not today, Dan. Come on, Mario, get in there, buddy. Woo! With the fist out. You can do it, buddy, go! Yeah, Mario! <laughs> Plus three points, Mario coming in for the win. Dan, I told you I was gonna beat you, buddy. You had nothing against me. Look at the champion, 
celebrate him now. It's Samario. It's a me. Man, I love playing this game. And uh, Dan, I'm sorry. I gotta apologize. Y you did great. You did great too. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, look, I get a little bit competitive. Dan hasn't beat me yet. He's actually, you know, he's never beat me in Mario Party. It's one of my favorite games, and I tend to go a little bit overboard when I play the game. I mean, I even have a fake mustache on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with winning, but being a good sport is important too. Now, even when we win, or you do better at something than someone else, we should still be sensitive to their feelings. I mean, Dan's a good sport. He's my camera guy, he's my friend. But even though I won, it means that he lost. Now, since he's my friend, I can be sad that he lost while still being happy that I won. Now, being a good friend and, a, and a caring about other people's feelings is what's most important. Now, we've talked before about how we were made in God's image. Not in a Mario costume, but the best example of what it looks like to act like God is to look at Jesus' life while he was here on earth. Now, people at that time couldn't fully understand just how important Jesus was, but that never made Jesus arrogant. He didn't go around demanding special treatment because he was the son of God. He didn't ignore the problems and the pain of those around him either. Jesus made time for everyone because he cared deeply for them all. Even though he was 100% God, Jesus was also 100% man. He had feelings and concerns, family and neighbors and friends, just like all of us. One of those friends was a man named Lazarus. Jesus got the word that his friend was sick. When Jesus arrived to the town where Lazarus lived, Lazarus' sister went to Jesus and told him that Lazarus had died. This news greatly moved and troubled Jesus. He cared about Lazarus and his sisters, and he was so sad. Now, he even wept. Now, even as a man, Jesus had immense power, and eventually, he used that power to raise Lazarus from the dead. That's incredible. But what's even more incredible is what happened when Jesus first visited Lazarus' tomb. He cried for his friend. Now, despite all of his power and wisdom in that moment, Jesus still experienced the same grief and sadness that we would feel if we lost one of our friends. I love this story so much because it shows the extent that Jesus cared for those around him. He never acted superior or uncaring, even though he had plenty of reason to. Jesus loves each of us the same way. and He cares about the problems we experience and the sadness that we feel. Now, he might have more wisdom and perspective than us, but that doesn't make our earthly troubles any less important to him. But if we can follow Jesus' example of empathy, we'll be able to love others in a similar way. You can celebrate when a friend wins a game. You could be sad with someone when their parents get a divorce, and you can be excited for them when they accomplish something really important. By recognizing our friends and how they feel and the things they experience in their lives, we can be better friends and neighbors to those around us. So, when you're going through hard times, remember, Jesus cares about your experience. And when you see someone else going through a hard time, you can love them, be happy for them, care for them, or even cry with them like Jesus did. Now, that is it for today's lesson. I'm getting out of the Mario outfit, and Dan, I owe you a big apology. I think I'm gonna actually challenge him to another game of Mario Party. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next week. Dan, let's do this thing. And I'm sorry for being mean to you, it won't happen again. But the mustache is coming on. We're playing. I'm taking sizzling steaks this time, Dan. I'm the cook. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law is based on these commandments. We are, we are, serving the good news.
name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have made. Be sure of this, I am with you, with you always. We are, we are, sharing the good news. You are, you are, our helper and our friend. Yeah, we give you praise. Give us, give us the strength to follow. Your love, your love makes the world brand new. Yeah, we shout your name. We are, we are, sharing the good news. You are, you are, our helper and our friend. Yeah, we give you praise. Give us, give us the strength to follow. Your love, your love makes the world brand new. Yeah, we shout.
stories of the Bible. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I don't know. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus, but Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, yeah, be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus. But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. So they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead.
So today's lesson, it has been a hard lesson for me to prepare because the title of today's lesson is God Knows Your Pain. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we're going to be talking about hard stuff today. But as I was studying yesterday, I found a video on YouTube that I thought might be good for us to watch, but to be sure, I sent it to Miss Julie, and I asked her, would she watch it and tell me what she thinks, and she agreed, so we're going to watch a video first, and then we'll get into the lesson, okay? What makes you sad? When my big sister doesn't play with me. And sometimes I play crying to get her to play with me. What makes you sad? When my ice cream melts. When I drop my ice cream. Bad dreams. When I have to get off video games. Hmm. Well, yesterday I watched the movie A uh, Dog Way Home. The Lion King. The movie Coco. The ending was so sad it made me teared up. <laughs> what makes you sad? The thought of being away from my mom at night. When like my siblings or my mom had to leave. When my dad's deployed, it's like really hard for me and my mom when somebody gets hurt. Like if someone gets hurt, people in pain. I get sad when people cry. It's when my brother snatches stuff from me. When someone takes something of mine. No one plays with me. When people don't play with me. When nobody plays with me. When I have nobody to play with. What makes you sad? If an animal gets abused. When animals get hit by cars. Like if they get killed, I would hunt down the other person. When you think a dog. If a dog died. When a dog eats die. And my hamster would die. My cat ugly. By a call, and it was my birthday. That lovey might get crushed by my roof in my house. What makes you sad? Nothing. 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 Bullies make me sad. When people hurt me, when people bully me, people yell at me until for no reason. Somebody being mean at me. When people bully me, like at school. People being rude to me. When people scream at me. And I got teased because I had dyslexia. That makes me sad. Bullies are the worst. What makes you sad? I get sad when I get lost. When my sister pulled my hair. That my sisters ruined my glasses with slime. They did? Yes. They poured a cup of slime all over them. And we had to try to freeze it off, but then we had to buy new gas shoes. When my brother calls me potty bird, then my brother got mean to me. Brother hates me, and then he punches me on the face. What makes you sad? Missing my friends in my hometown. We're losing friends that you really feel connected to. My friends leaving when my family has to leave. When I'm home alone. When I'm all alone. When I'm alone at home. Sitting in a chair in a dark room. When my mom tries to yell at me. When my parents beat me. Oh yeah, getting a whooping. We're doing something bad. What makes you sad? All my favorite things in the room. When my mother's glass broke. When I don't get stuff I want. When my dad says he's disappointed and makes me sad. Which I really hate. When I fall. Falling down. When I get hurt. What makes you sad? Mm. Um, uh, uh, PewDiePie lost a T-Series. <laughs> when babies cry, I don't like that. The TV time? Someone tells you a lie. When I have to leave from trips, like super fun trips, the end of summer. When my Pokemon disappears. When my sister goes to school. I don't want anything bad to happen to my sisters and my brother. Like if someone died in my family. When relatives die. People dying. Dying. People dying. The death and growing up. And more death. What makes you sad? When my mom says that there's going to be something fun, but it's actually possible with dishes. <laughs> All right. So, you do it every year. Has that ever happened to anybody? Your mom's going to give you something fun to do, but it's still a choice. Isn't it like the worst? 
here we go, here we go. But here's the thing. I have all kinds of notes today. Okay, so from the video, is this kind of telling us we probably need to be helpful to other people? Because we all have sad things happen, correct? It's just not any fun when things are sad and, and it's hard to handle. But we have our friends and we have Jesus. So if you know your friend is having a hard time with something, should you maybe, should you maybe try to be there to maybe not tell them, oh, don't worry about it, but maybe say, I'm so sorry. Isn't that kind of, you know, when Jesus wept about Lazarus, we know why he wept. That was his friend. He was sad. But here's the thing. He did raise Lazarus from the dead. But we don't really see that happen today. But Jesus loves us as much as he loved Lazarus. And he's there for us. It's just that he chooses different things for us. So whatever he has chosen for us, he wants us to follow that path. Now, let's just say, um, oh, I don't know, um, Reagan Flanagan um, had something happen to her this week. Well, you know what? She's had friends to be there for her. They've all been there calling her and checking on her and supporting her because it was just a really hard thing that happened. And that's the thing. Her friends are showing her Jesus. They are being her neighbor. Who was here last week when we talked about being a neighbor? Okay, we are each other's neighbor. You don't have to live like right next door to somebody to be their neighbor. We are all each other's neighbor. And it's up to us to be there and help others. Now, let's see here. I have two little things that I brought in here. Today, when I walked in the uh, Awana store, oh, I might get choked up. This plant was sitting there with my name on it. And this is from Miss Mandy. She gave me this today because she knew today's a hard day for me. Because my Julie and my Jeremy won't be here next week. Even though I'm so happy they're going, as their mom, man, Julie's my little best friend. And we just have such a good time together. But Mandy knew I would have a bit of a hard time. So she was my neighbor. She gave me something to show me that she cares and she loves us. Then another, this was a fun, neat surprise. I found this book later and it was laying beside my computer. And y'all heard me talk about my whole house is Disney. My watch is Disney. Most of, if you see me during the week, I'm gonna have on a Disney shirt. I am just Disney, Disney, Disney. Well, Miss Patricia has been to my house many times. We've known each other forever. But this Disney book belonged to her husband when he was a really little boy. She brought this to me to add to my collection and put on my shelf because she knew I would enjoy this. Let me tell you something. When I saw that, I got choked up and I got tearful again. But here's the thing. I've got some really good friends who love me and who care about me. And the thing is this, y'all heard me say before how much I love you guys. I am one of the luckiest people on the face of this earth because God allows me to work with people your age. And my kids know it. I don't love everybody better than my kids. I'm not saying that. I really love my kids. But my oldest son told me one time, he said, I've always loved watching you talk to kids. He said, you just light up and you get on their level. And here's the thing, that's not me doing that. That's Jesus doing it through me. But let me tell you something. 
I love what I do. Well, speaking of pain, y'all hear me say every week, man, Wax on is my favorite place to be. I'd rather be right here than anywhere else. And that's the absolute truth. But here's the thing. Mr. Peter is coming. And when Mr. Peter comes, he's going to be right here doing wax on. I will be here for a while with him. But I'm not going to be in here forever. Because really and truly, my real job in this church is down there doing what Miss Mandy does. But God has really been working with me. And I am so excited that he's coming. I just know in my heart of hearts, he is the man God wants as our children's pastor. And he's going to come in here. He's going to do a great job with you guys. I think when you guys come to Wax on each week, even though we're having fun now, I think you're going to have just as much fun when he comes. Because here's the thing. I know some of you, we're just really close. We're really attached. But the thing is this. You can get attached to him too. And here's the thing. I'll still be here because you know when y'all come in, you better come in that door down there because I want to see you. So I can't ever walk out of the lobby because I don't want to miss seeing any one of you come in. Because I think of all of you as my kids. I tell when I'm with my friends, this is what I tell my friends. I have about a million grandkids because they're all the kids at West Acres. They're my grandkids. I think of every one of you as mine. But here's the thing. When Mr. Peter comes, are y'all going to support him? You are, because here's the thing. God sent. He's sending Mr. Peter to us. So he will be here to do whatever it is that God has. And it's going to be great. Now, let's see here. Let me, we have a few questions, because as I was watching the video, even though I watched it last night, I made notes of little things I wanted to do. Where's the microphone? Hey, Julie or, or Miss Kristen, will somebody grab the microphone? We're going to do the Roman microphone, and we're going to maybe ask some questions. I'll tell you what, we're going to ask five people. Uh, it's up here. It's up here. I'm sorry. It's right here. I'm so sorry. Okay, I just kept it on. We will ask, let's say... Let's do, we'll do five people for right now. So we're going to ask five different people this question. This is, it doesn't have anything to do with church, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. We want, I want to know a movie that maybe does make you sad. So who can name a movie that makes him sad? Okay, Palmer, he's right there. Wait a minute, wait on the microphone so we can hear you. When people die. Okay, but do you know of a movie that makes you sad when you watch a movie and it's kind of sad? Can't think um, of one? Lion King? Lion King does. I think Ryan may have one. Eight Below. Eight Below. I've never seen it. Okay. Molly, right? <laughs> I'm still remembering. I'm so proud of me. Beauty and the Beast. <gasps> I love Beauty and the Beast. I can quote like every word in the movie. But so that's a sad one for you? No, I'm not gonna do it. I mean, I would. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know I'm a nut anyway. So that would just really confirm it. So that's a sad one. Okay, Kendall, give me a sad movie. A dog's purpose. A dog's purpose. Oh, I haven't seen it. Does it make you cry? I know one time Julie was talking about the movie Marley, and she was talking about it was sad. I'm like, well, I don't want to watch it. So I didn't watch it. All right, Raven. Wait on the microphone. WandaVision. Um, um, okay. The Halloween one. This sad and scary. Like that dad um, goes in on, um, like that um, red thing. Okay. Okay, that does sound sad to me. How many have we asked? I don't even know. Let's do a movie that makes you happy. How about that? We're going to switch gears. Let's do some that make you happy. All right, Miss Kristen, I'll let you pick them. Like your favorite movie. 
Ariel. Ariel, the little mermaid. My daughter-in-law says she's a mermaid. Soul. Oh, that's a good one. So, hey, who's seen Soul, the Disney Soul? It's a good one. We watched it at Julie and Jeremy's house. Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Very good. All right. What you got, Jacob? Give us your favorite movie. Avengers Endgame. Okay, I don't know. I'm a nerd. I don't know these things. I mean, I know who they are, but I don't know the movie. Star Wars. Oh, I'm not a Star Wars person, but do you know who he is? Mr. Jeremy. He, well, I'm not. He has a Star Wars tattoo. I'm like, what? I should have, well, I better hush, okay. Trolls. Trolls, that's a funny one, isn't it? There we go. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, let me see. Let me, let me look at my notes. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um, okay. I was going to make a note about, I was going to talk about Julie moving and all that, but I've already done that. So that's all of my little notes. Um, does anybody have a story of maybe when they helped someone when they were sad? But you know what, Jacob? You probably could, I tell you what I think about when I look at Jacob. When his sister Reagan was so sick, I'm quite sure you were there to help a lot, weren't you? Well, but did you pray for her? Yes, you did, because that's your sister. And I can tell you are so close. So even though you were not with her, you were her neighbor praying for her here. Even though you're her brother, you were being her neighbor as Jesus would want you to. All right. Let's see here. Miss Isabella? My mom. You pray for your mom? Yes. Now, your mom works with sick people, doesn't she? I can't hear. She had COVID one time. Oh, she had COVID one time. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Okay. So, you prayed for your mom, and she got better, didn't she? Isn't it always good when we pray for someone? Because here's the thing. When somebody is going through something really, really hard, like, you may not have ever gone through it. And I may tell my friends, I can't quite understand how you feel because I've not been there. But I can tell you this, I love you and I'm praying for you and I want to be here for you. And I, um, I've got a, another friend, she, um, she's a lot older than you guys are. She's like grown up, she's married. But her mother just suddenly passed away. And they were super good friends. So I waited a while because so many people were calling and texting. And I sent her a text the other day. And I wanted her to know how much I've been praying for her. And that I couldn't feel what she's feeling. But I understand that it's hard. And I told her, I said, you can call me, text me anytime you want. And I said, if you want to call me crying, if you want to call me screaming, whatever you need, you just let me know, and I'm here for you. And I tell people that a lot because I never cut my phone off. My phone is on 24 hours a day. And I do get texts sometime in the middle of the night. A friend of mine called me one night super late. And the minute I answered the phone, I knew something was wrong. But she called me. She said, we've got to get on the road right now. We've got to go. Will you pray? And I'm like, of course I will. Because when people, I'm sorry, when people ask you to pray, that's one of the most important things you can do for someone. Because when we're praying, who are we talking to? God. So here's the thing. When my friend Melissa called me and asked me to pray, and if I had said, sure, I'll pray. And then I put it out of my mind and I never said a prayer. I would not have been her neighbor, but here's the thing. She was counting on me to be there to help her talk to Jesus. Because, see, sometimes when things are hard, have you all had things happen to you that just really made you sad? 
So sometimes when it really makes you sad, isn't it kind of hard to talk to Jesus sometimes? It just really is. But see, that's what we have friends for. Our friends can talk to Jesus for us. Okay? And you know, I live by myself, I tell you all the time. So this morning, I'm praying, praying for wax on. I'm walking around my house all by myself, talking out loud to Jesus the whole time. Telling Jesus, please don't let me be on the stage. I want you to be on the stage. I'm just there saying what you want me to say. Things like that. I always want to do what he wants me to do. So that's what we should all want, correct? All right, so that kind of wraps our lesson up. We have, I don't know, we may be finishing right on time. I'm not exactly sure how long they're going to be over there. But what I'm going to do, we're going to pray. We're going to do our offering. And after that, I don't know if the praise team girls have something. If not, we may do a DP video. Did anyone bring wax zone money to shop? Okay, um, Zach, didn't you shop last week? Well, here's the thing. If you shopped last week, you can shop again, but after everybody else does. They need to go. So if you did not shop last week, you can today. But we're going to do our prayer right now, and then um, we'll do the White Zone store and the uh, DP years. What have you got, Miss Isabel? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I think these belong to Mr. James. Thank you. We will give those to him. Okay, what you got, love? You want to do round up? Well, here's the thing. Let's do round up maybe another week. How about that? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do round up another week. But anyway, we're gonna pray right now. Are we all ready? we got to be extra quiet because this is our time to talk to God, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, what another beautiful day you have given us. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for the privilege of getting to call you Father. And I want to thank you for allowing me to serve you here at West Acres. Lord Jesus, I just pray that each person in this room, each one of these kids, I pray, Lord Jesus, that when it's time for them to see the path you want them to take, that they will clearly see that path. That they will take your hand and they will say, I'm ready, help me along this journey. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will always keep you by their side, that they never step away from you. Because, Lord Jesus, you're consistent. You're there by our side as long as we stay where we're supposed to be. You're always there as long as we do not step away. And I pray that for each and every one of these kids. I want to pray for them as Mr. Peter comes in a few weeks and we begin to make the transition. I just pray, Lord Jesus, that Wax Zone is going to be so great. I love Wax Zone. I love these kids. But I love the fact that you have given us Mr. Peter as our children's pastor, I just know it's going to be the best thing ever. So I want to pray for him and his wife as they're preparing this move, that their way will be paved and it will be a smooth transition for them. I pray for those on our prayer list. There are many. You know each and every name, and while they're on there, I want to pray for them. And I want to pray for each household representative here today that you will take us all home safe. Give us a good, safe week and bring us back next week to worship you again. In Christ's name, amen.